Welcome to the next segment for the Sage Intact Construction Inventory Construction Configuration and Workflow Series. We're going to discuss our fourth and final workflow process today. We're going to discuss going through order entry and actually selling inventory directly to customers, creating customer invoices and relieving inventory right out of the system. And we're going to set up some different workflows as far as uh, different phases of that sales cycle. So we're going to set up some quotes, some sales orders, and turn those into sales invoices. So let's dive right in. What I'm going to do first is just kind of review the transaction definitions that are going to be needed for this types of scenario that we've been doing in each of the sessions. So in this case, uh, we're going through order entry. And in order entry, uh, you'll notice here under my all section, I have some multiple transaction definitions, but one we're going to focus on today are the ones that I have starred here. So we're going to, we're going to go through and set up a quote and this is optional and then we're going to turn that quote into a customer sales order and then we're going to turn that sales order into an invoice so basically what you want to do is make sure in your setup and transaction definitions you have these workflows built so again if you can if you have any existing already that are in there you can use the existing ones or you can create one from scratch here so we'll go take a look at the quote first. And uh, I set one up from scratch here, I called it quote. And you'll notice under the template type, there's actually a quote template type. And if you look at the help there, it's gonna kind of let you know, hey, you can create a sales quote. Okay, pretty straightforward in that process. It's a workflow category called quote. And we can also tie it to a reporting category too. Actually, there is one for sales quote. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna make it active. We're going to give it its own number sequence here. So in my number sequence, I created one called quote. And you can label this however you want. I just set up a six digit sequence with a Q in as the prefix to represent a quote number. And again, however you want to do this. And if you remember, you can do it per entity as well. So if you want to maybe put an entity prefix on and then the Q or something like that, you can do that as well and tie that in over in the entity settings. So as far as the stages here, when I'm providing quotes for customers, they haven't agreed to them yet. So in this scenario, I don't want any effect on inventory whatsoever to happen at this stage. So you'll notice here inventory is left blank. And in this phase, I've also turned on sales tax. So again, for more details on how to set up sales tax, please dive into our sales tax training series of videos as well. And those will come back into here and show you how to set those up inside your transaction definition. So in this scenario, I have enabled subtotals. I have a line set up for sales tax, set up according to the instructions, and that is ready to go. So it's something you need to consider on the sales side if you need to charge sales tax. And if you notice here, again, I'm at the quote stage, so I don't wanna post anything anywhere at this point. It's not going to general ledger. It's not going to accounts receivable. It's not going to inventory. So it's going to be a do not post here as well. We're not going to create this from anything else. The, the quote is going to be the initial workflow step here. So there's nothing that's going to be flown in. When we convert it, a sales quote to a sales order, we want to close the transaction. If let's say they're only ordering two of the three items quoted, it's just going to close the transaction if they want to order that third item later. You can start a new sales quote, but you could also allow this to be left open and then do additional sales orders off of that if you want to. Now, one of the things you do need to fill out is, especially if you want pricing to pre-fill in during your entries, is you need to fill out a price list. Even if you're not, you don't really have anything set up, there should be a default one in your system automatically called base price list. So make sure under your initial price list, you have base price list filled out. And if you want to look at it, it allows you to establish multiple price lists with a start and an end date. And they establish this way well into the future. So what I found is if you leave this blank, when you grab the item, you'll notice the, the pricing won't pre-fill because it doesn't know where to start with initial price list. So make sure that's filled in there at all stages in your sales cycle. In general and then again if you want me to default terms you can and shipping methods you can fill those in here as well but that is the most important one this initial price list 
because it's a quote, you can go ahead and design your own sales quote through printed document templates. I just set up a quick default one that's really just a copy of an invoice, but I renamed it quote. And you could further manipulate that in your system, again, under platform services, printed document templates. And as always, what I recommend is in your contact titles, just make sure you have show on print and allow edit turned on for all of these in case you want to use them or edit them during the entry. And then based on your quote requirements, what else do you want to key in off of your quote? You could turn on these additional fields as needed. I turned on enable scope and enable scheduling. You know, those are the two that I turn on for now, but you could, there's other options here. Explore those, turn them all on. Go take a look and see what they are and see if you really want them turned on or not. And that's going to be the first tab. The second tab, because we're not posting anywhere, we're not posting to General Ledger, we don't need to fill this out for this definition. Security is the same as always. Do I want to allow editing, changing customers, and have specific permissions? Who can do a quote? You can set all that up as normal. And you can have, again, remembering multiple number sequences and forms based on different entities. So if you have multiple entities using this transaction definition, you could establish different forms. Maybe one entity is taxable, one's not, you know, so you can set that up accordingly. So we'll click save here because I did make that change on the reporting category. And that's our quote. So that's our first level. And the next level is, okay, they've gone ahead and uh, agreed to this quote, and they're going to turn it into a customer sales order. We haven't invoiced them yet, but we do want to make sure that the inventory, the items that they ordered, that they're on hold at least, put on reserve so that we don't sell them to somebody else. So in this customer sales order, you'd create a new one for that. You'll notice now the template type I'm going to use is order. Okay, so again, it's very straightforward. Order, create a sales order. Same scenarios we just went through. I'm going to have a sales order numbering structure set up. So again, if you don't see a default one in here, just create your own. Click add. I created one myself. I just called it SO for sales order. You know, very basic. Now, though, in the inventory setup, we want to affect the on hold or possibly on order, but on hold inventory total in this scenario, I wanna put it on hold for the quantity and the value and I wanna click add. So what I want to do is put it on hold. So now you can see in my inventory value, I'll still show, let's say four on hand, but one's on hold, okay? So we don't wanna reduce the on hand yet in case order goes through. And then you could default how you want to select your warehouses. What do you want the default warehouse to be for this sales order? Maybe you're selling through a particular warehouse. You could change the settings on that. Now, on the sales order, I don't necessarily need to show the tax information. So you'll notice I didn't enable it for here. You could if you wanted to, but it's a sales order. I just want to see the actual items. On my sales order, we'll deal with the tax later in the next step. So I, I did disable that in this phase of it. And we still have a do not post. We're really not doing anything. We're just putting it on hold. We're not taking it out of inventory. You could elect to do that. If you wanted to transfer it to an inventory, maybe a different warehouse or something like that on hold warehouse, you could set that up and you can establish a GL entry if you wanted to. And if you'll notice down here on the workflow, well, I want to be able to convert a quote into a customer sales order. So basically, that's why I have that listed here. Some people elect, you know what, they want to generate it all in one swoop. So they want to be able to also take a quote and convert it to directly to a sales invoice as well. You'll see that in the next step, you'll have that option too. But from a sales order perspective, we want to be able to create one from scratch or we want to be able to convert it from a quote. Once we convert it, this is the option here where, you know, do you want to close that quote or do you want to leave it open and have subsequent sales orders as well? So you can establish that. 
And then there's that price list we talked about in the last session, in the last transaction definition. And then down here, I'm going to have a different form. So now I'm going to have a sales order form that I generate out. Maybe that's an internal form. Maybe that goes to the customer. It's up to you, but you can have a separate form for that as well. Same settings here. What do I want to enable? I would recommend enabling the same that you did in the prior step so they copy over. And, you know, don't need posting configuration. And then your entity options. So none of that changes at that point. So we'll save that. Now we're at the point where from a customer sales order, we want to go ahead and um, generate that sales invoice. Maybe ship it out to the customer. So in here, I'm going to create a sales invoice definition. Invoice type. Now I'm going to have a invoice internal invoice numbering system. And now for inventory, I want to reduce the on hand in inventory, subtract, and I also want to release it from on hold, which is going to subtract. So I'm going to have two lines here for my inventory updating, as well as when I'm creating the sales invoice, I definitely want to show the sales tax at this point. So I'm going to turn that back on. What's really nice is it will pre-fill right in. You don't have to fill it out if you've already created it at the quote level. Now we have a difference. We have a transaction posting. Now I want it to hit accounts receivable and I want it to relieve inventory. So because I have inventory selected here, it's going to have two sections for my posting configuration. And we'll take a look at that in a second. And let's just go through here and take a look. Now I'm going to say, all right, I want to be able to create a sales invoice from a customer sales order. And this is where I said, you might also want to say, I also want to be able to create an invoice right from a quote. Skip the sales order part. Let's just generate the invoice right away. You could do that as well here. So you can have multiple conversions. I'm going to leave it off because it shows a little better in the workflow if it's just one. And then from the sales order, do I want to, when if I convert an invoice for partial, do I want to leave the transaction open? Yeah, maybe you're only invoicing for the part that's were shipped. Um, so you can create invoice one. And then when the second item is shipped, you can create invoice two. So you can do that. Base price list is filled in. And I have a separate now actual invoice document that I'm going to send out to the customer. So you can have a separate form for that. And this, because you're converting, it doesn't have anything as far as the additional information. It just converts over. Now, in my posting setup, you'll notice here, we're going to do two things. We're going to do our typical post from accounts receivable. So you want to make sure that any items, so any items that you're invoicing through the system have a GL group. So if your item has a GL group of material for the AR entry, we want to make sure any item that is selected that has a group of material is going to go to this revenue account, the credit side. I have this listed because we also have contract price as one of our revenue item groups. So, you know, I might have a labor item here and that labor item goes to a service revenue and the material side of it goes to a product revenue. So you can establish multiple accounts based on how you want it to go. Just keep in mind, it's all based on that item setup and what item you select during entry, which we'll go through and see and link that back into here. And then the offset is going to be account receivable. Now, at the same time, we want to relieve inventory. So we want to do a cost of goods sold account mapping, which will come up automatic when you select an inventory effect. So what we're going to say here is we want to take it out of the credit account, uh, out of inventory, and the debit account out of cost of goods sold, into cost of goods sold, material or sales, cost of goods sold, whatever you want your account to be. And you can link it by item group type as well. Okay. So you want to make sure those are both set up. Security is the same as it's always been. Entity is the same as it's always been. Once you have that established, you can click Save. Okay, so now that we have our definition set up, let's go ahead and enter some transactions. So I'm going to do this at the entity level. So I'm going to go into my Timberline General Construction Entity. 
and uh, let's say we got a uh, request for a quote on a couple items that we're going to sell to a customer. So I'm going to go into order entry and I can use my favorites if I wanted to. So if I switch to order entry here, you know, you can see what's nice about these favorites is you can, I'm just holding my mouse button down. You can drag these up and down so I can put it in my order here too. Quote, customer sales order, sales invoice. So if I'm doing one specific task, this is a nice way to get into it. You can also go right into the all menu for order entry and you can kind of, depending on what transactions you have, it'll, it'll group them. But there's my quote, there's my sales order. So I'm going to go directly in from my favorites menu and I'm going to create a new quote. I don't even want to see a list. I just want to create a new quote. It'll pop right into the screen. Here's my date. Who's my customer? The bill to the ship to now. In any of these transaction definition scenarios, all the different ones we've been doing all throughout, I guess the ones not for stock, but anything as far as ordering, you can track a project. So you can either do it all the way through and track it directly through sales orders, but you could also set up a project and code it a specific project and also link it to a sales order. So it's all optional as far as what you do. You do not need a project, but if you want to report on it all over in the projects module, you can most definitely code the project at the same time as the sales order. So this looks pretty typical as the other definitions, build to, ship to. Now, the ship to is where it's going to get the tax information from. So some people like to have multiple contact addresses set up. So you can see here the Wegmans group, maybe it's a project specific or a particular store that could change the sales tax group. And you'll see all this in the sales classes, sales tax classes. But if I click view here, you'll notice in the additional information, this is where we're saying when this contacts you, here's the default tax group. And it looks like Iowa exempt. They're exempt from tax for that project. So that store is exempt. But if I go back to the direct Wegmans group and look at the tax, they're not exempt, so we're going to use that one to see how that works. So this is all going to be determined by the ship to on the order entry side. So your, your typical setup, again, you have attachments, maybe a request for quote comes in, you want to attach it, customer PO number, which you're probably not going to have at this point. You can set up expiration dates on when your quote expires. So we can say it's going to expire at the end of January. And then here's those additional fields, depending on what you want to fill out. You can also set up smart rules to make sure that these fields get filled out by someone who's creating the quote. Ship date, they need it by uh, December 31st. You can have a tracking number listed in there. So just go ahead and turn those fields on and take a look through them. The scope of work expands, so you can really cut and paste in here. You can keep going on your scope of work, and all of this can be on the form. And then you have scheduling as well, you know, as you want to fill those up. But these are all optional fields. And as before, the entry screen is the most important screen. So just to recap again, I know we talked about it in the other sessions, is if you want to edit this screen, edit entries layout, you can add columns, you can move columns, and you can remove columns. So for example, if I did want to track a project as well, you might want to add the project information on the entry screens, the cost codes, the cost types. You just drag them up in the edit, okay? So in this scenario, we're gonna leave it off and I'm gonna say, all right, what do they wanna order? We're gonna sell them some microwaves. They want 24 inch microwave. And we don't need a cross reference. I probably should have taken that column up. Which warehouse? This could be changed later, but it's in the GC warehouse. Now, what's nice is, one of the columns, especially if you're tracking serial numbers or lots, you can have this column be available on the entry screen here. And you can always click on this and say, all right, which serial number are you quoting them? So we have three microwaves in stock. We're going to quote them the serial number 346. But, I mean, most likely you're not going to do that until the next phase when you do the sales invoice. But you can see here, if you click on that serial number, it also shows you what's available. There's three quantities available that you can, um, that you can pull from. That function is 
is a nice feature to have right here. And it also we also have the column right here for quantity on hand. So they're gonna they're gonna we want they want to quote on one of them. And you'll notice the price filled in, and that price is directly related under my view in my item setup. Just to recap, that's pulling from my base price here. Now with the pricing lists, you could establish a more complex pricing structure and uh, just dig into the help for that if you need more information on that as well. So we're going to quote them $430 for that. Um, maybe there's other items. Maybe it's a stove too. So they're going to do a stove. It looks like we have five on hand for that in the GC warehouse. Now, if I flip this to residential, you can see here it tells me by warehouse what's on hand. So it's zero now. So I know that I have five on hand in that warehouse. So we're good. I'm going to order one and that we're going to quote them $950. And maybe there's some labor for installation that you might want to add for this. I don't have that set up, so I'm going to skip that for now, but you could do that as well. So if it's taxable, the one thing you have to do is you'll notice because we enabled those subtotals, you see the subtotals turned on here. After you enter this information, you do need to click calculate subtotals. And now you'll notice the sales tax line comes in down here, shows you the, I turned on detail, so it shows you the uh, tax detail and what the percent is. And there's my, there's my total after tax, 1476. You can also add, there's other things you could do with subtotals, not just sales tax. You could add additional charges, freight on there. It's all based on how you set up those subtotals. And you could do that right in the transaction definition. But in this scenario, we're just charging tax. So I got my quote set up. You could set it up as a draft. It's not ready to post until I review it or somebody reviews it. But I'm going to hit post on this. And again, it's more of a save. Because again, if you think about it, we're not really posting anything anywhere. So now it shows up as a, a quote, quote number five. It's a pending state which means it hasn't been converted yet, so it's an open quote. You can see these other quotes have been converted and turned into sales orders. So somebody who's tracking this information might want to create a view, maybe just for open quote. So you can create a view just to show you open quotes if you want to, or you can filter on it here too. So now if I want to send that out, I can hit print or email. And if you click email, it's going to pre-fill in who's supposed to get it from the customer setup. And you can create your own email template for a sales quote email template, which I don't have set up. But hey, here's your quote. Please respond back here within blah, blah, blah. And you can fill that email template out and say, use that template when we send it out. I'm just going to hit print so we can see it. And this is a very basic form I just set up. It's not complete, but you want to make sure your forms are correct in the printed document template setup. And you notice here, I like I don't have the scope on this form yet, so I'd want to put the scope in, make it more look like a sales quote, but I do have a line to sign and things like that. But there's the tax information and so forth. Okay, so that could be emailed, sent out. And uh, basically, when they come back and say, yeah, go ahead and let's get this ordered. You can come into here, come back into here. So I can either come into my quotes right here or an order entry quote. Instead of hitting the plus now, I'm going to hit the quote. And I can see the quote that they're, that they're referring to. I can look it up. You can look it up by the customer name, whatever you want to look it up by. And I can click convert. And it's going to say, what can I convert it to? It's, I'm going to convert this to a customer sales order. They gave me the OK. So I'm going to click that. And that's going to bring me into the entry screen for customer sales order. It's going to pre-fill in all the information from the quote, including my scope of work, anything that I had set up in the prior. There's my need by date, ship by date, all pre-fills in. You can modify any of this at this point. Maybe they say, you know what, we want to buy two of these at this point. You could change that there, or you could change it in the quote before you convert it. But you can go ahead and update that information. And what can happen now is, and let's, let's just give this a whirl. Let's say everything is good. Notice my sales tax isn't showing here because it's a sales order. I really don't need to see it at this point. I can see it on the quote if I need to. I'm going to hit post here. Let's see if we get any messages. 
Okay. So this isn't going to require you to pick an item yet. So it didn't require me to pick a serial number yet. So if I go back into my view and I go down to my detail and let's just look at the microwave item. You'll notice here I have three on hand, one on hold, and two available. Okay, so you can use any of these, these tabs, but these are the ones I, I typically use. As you say, we have three on hand, one on hold, okay, and two available. So that's kind of how that's going to show. And then in your tracking, you'll see there's your three that are on hand, and there's the serial number. So that's still all available. I just wanted to show you that. Same thing for the stove, five on hand, one on hold, four available. If we needed to generate a sales order, same thing, print an email. Maybe they have to sign the sales order as well. Or you need to send that internally to somebody. And this total isn't working right. We'll have to fix that on the form. So you want to test these forms as you go through these as well. And then it shows you the sales order number. Okay, so at this point it's pending, which means it hasn't been converted. So show me open sales orders. And at that time I can convert it into an actual sales order. And same flow, it's now going to add tax. So there's that $96. There's the ship too. So that maybe that's changed now. Attachments, all that good stuff. Now it shows me my entries, same way. Now you'll notice the serial button comes up here. So hold on to that thought for a second. You'll see my tax information already pre filled over. So that's good to go. And let's go ahead and post this. We want to generate this sales invoice. We should get an error here. Because I'm tracking serial numbers, it's saying, hey, you need to enter a serial number. What serial number do you want to use for these items? So it will give you a message if you, and this is optional if you choose to turn on serial numbers. So we're gonna have to say for each one of these items, we have to select which serial number to use. So for this item, we're gonna say go ahead and just give them 346, quantity to fill, one. And I could just close this here, hide details. And then on that serial number, the second line, for the stove, we're going to use this serial number, grab and pull that, pull that out of inventory. Okay, so now that I did that, I'll be able to hit post. Now that's going to generate a sales invoice. And it's listed as closed because it automatically converts it and posts it over to accounts receivable because we said to do that in that transaction definition. So if I print our email, I could send out the invoice to the customer right from here. And there's a, your, again, your default invoice form and my totals are not working again, so we have to fix these forms, but that should work in your instance. And now, because that is automatically posting accounts receivable, you'll notice if I go over to accounts receivable, just like we did on the AP bill side, if I go into invoices and accounts receivable, you'll see that invoice right there. There's the amount, $14.76. If I take a look at it and look at the posting details, you'll see it posted accounts receivable for the full amount, all three lines together. And I have it turned on in detail, so that's why it's showing three lines. It posted $96 to sales tax payable, and then it posted uh, revenue to the product's revenue account. So it did that for you. And now we have an open receivable in the system. And there you go. Also, if we go take a look at the inventory now, so let's just go back into that sales invoice. You can go to any one of them to see that information. You can just go directly into the item itself. But let's just go take a look at that sales invoice. And if I go down, notice right here, it already is reflected. The quantity on hand has already been updated. Microwave, no longer on hold. There's two on hand, two available. Okay. So it'll make that change for you in inventory uh, in real time. And I should show you 
if we, let me see this right here, posting details, uh, I forgot to show you this. You'll notice there's also an entry going to the inventory journal and that is going to um, the debit amount is debiting cost of goods sold for the two items and crediting inventory. So it's changing that effect there as well. So that basically completes our process for the order entry process with selling inventory items and creating uh, customer invoices. And um, we'll look, uh, look forward to the next session where we're gonna wrap it up and talk about reporting and some other uh, additional workflows that can be done through the system. Talk to you soon, thank you.